Okay. Okay, as mentioned, we come now to the last parable, or the last pair, in Matthew chapter 13, which then pairs also with Matthew chapter 25. Are you all still fit? Yeah? So we're going to make it, uh, I think, on time, short. Matthew chapter 13, let's all read together, verses... 47 to 50. Amen. Matthew 13, verses 47 to 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down vessels, but through the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, okay. Right, so this is the last parable here in Matthew 13 in regards to the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And it tells us how God will deal with the existing nations, with the unbelievers living on this earth when the Lord comes back. Right. In order to complete the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, God also needs to show us what he will do with the unbelievers when he comes back, right? Otherwise, the mysteries would not be complete. So, the sea here, we read here that there was a net cast into the sea. The sea here refers to the nations, to the world, to the world and with the people, the fish in it, the unbelievers. Let's um, read in Revelation chapter 17. It's being made clear there what the sea refers to. In Revelation... Chapter 17 regards the harlot in verse 15 there it says then he said to me the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples multitudes nations and tongues the harlot there was sitting on many waters and here in this chapter, it is made clear that the waters refers to the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. All kind of people. The unbelievers. The sea here is definitely not something positive. It refers to those who have not accepted the gospel of grace. And that's why also when the Lord called the disciples when he lived on this earth said, I will make you fishers of men, right? To preach the gospel to the unbelievers. So the sea here in this parable in Matthew 13 refers to the unbelievers or the, the world, right? And the dragnet, the net what was cast into the sea and when it was full full of fish all kind of fish it was thrown into the shore and then a separation was made between good fish and bad fish and this happens at the end of the age 
at the very end of the day of God's wrath before the millennium kingdom, right when the Lord comes back. He will charge the nations, the living unbelievers at that time. So, and this parable of Dragnet also pairs up with Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We can read verse 31. Let's read together. Uh, let's read to, um, let's read to 40. Yeah. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Okay, till here, quickly. Right, again, the same thing happening here. All the nations will be gathered before him, before the Lord sitting on the throne of his glory, and he will separate them one from another. And here it, he will separate them between sheep and goats, which refers also in Matthew 13 to the good fish versus the bad fish. Yeah. And so in uh, verse 33, it then continues, he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the last of these brethren, you did it to me. Okay. Amen. So here the sheep or the sheep or the good fish were the unbelievers that at the time when the left believers on that time during the, the great day of God's wrath were living on this earth, those unbelievers helped the persecuted ones, the persecuted believers, right? So the Lord says, what you have done, for instance, you gave them food, you closed them, right? And you took them in to help them. You did this in verse, as we just read, in verse 40, you did it to one of the least of these my brethren. So the unbelievers helping the least of my brethren, says the Lord, the King. So the least of my brethren are those that were not raptured yet at that time. They were the, la the least ones, meaning the left ones, unfaithful Christians, not being the first fruit, not being martyrs, right, but still living on this earth 
during the great tribulation, the, God's, the day of God's, the yeah, during the time the beast was reigning. And those Christians, of course, the beast persecuted. Right? We know that from Revelation, that the beast was given authority to persecute the Christians at that time. Right? So, then the good, I call them, let's say, the good unbelievers, the sheep, or the good fish, they were helping those persecuted Christians, giving them food, closing them, and so on. Right? So, these unbelievers did to the one of the least of my brethren, says the Lord. The Lord acknowledged this as they did it to him. Right? So there were definitely those good fish, the sheep, that the Lord then said in verse 46, in verse 46, if you go to Matthew 25, verse 46, he says, but at the very end, but the righteous ones, I will lead them into eternal life. Amen. Which then are those, because they did so good on the persecuted Christians, they were rewarded in a sense to go into eternal life, meaning they continued as the nations to live during the millennium kingdom. These were the sheep or the good fish. Now, what about the other ones? What about the goats or the bad fish? Let's read in Matthew chapter 25, continue in verses 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, the goats, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not close me. Sick in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment. Right? Just into eternal life. So those on the left side, the goats or the bad fish, they were thrown alive into eternal punishment, the lake of fire. Because they did not help during the time when the Christians, the believers, were persecuted, they didn't care. They didn't close them nor give them, gave them food. Right? So, the punishment is here. They will be thrown alive into the lake of fire. Those are the goats or the bad fish. Right? The bad fish, they were thrown away. So now, how did those on the right side, the sheep, you know, how, based on what, did they do and help the Christians? Well, in the beginning of the last three and a half years, right, before the Millennium Kingdom, there was preached the eternal gospel. In Revelation chapter 14, it 
in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, there is a gospel preached by an angel. Verse 6 and 7. Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hours of his judgment has come. The things of the water. That's right. Yeah, when the beast was reigning there in the last, the three and a half years before the millennium kingdom, before the judgment of the nations, there was a gospel preached. A different kind of gospel than what we preach today to the unbelievers. It was as it says here, the eternal gospel or the everlasting gospel. And this angel preached it saying, fear God, fear God. Our gospel today is, well, what do you, Rebecca, preach to your colleagues? Do you say, fear God? <laughs> No, we preach the gospel of grace. We say, receive Jesus Christ. Believe in him and you shall be saved. Right? From eternal punishment. And you preach the gospel of the heavenly kingdom. Come, receive the king into your life. Right? So that we may inherit the kingdom. And it's not the angel. Exactly. We are today the Teaching the gospel to the unbelievers. But at that time, hopefully you will not be on the earth anymore. <laughs> at that time, it's a different gospel because the age of grace has ended. Right? And it is now the beast reigning here on earth. And the angel preaches, fear God. Give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. Everyone at that time, living still on the earth, knew there is God. Because, you know, supernatural things happened, right? That the stars fell down from the sky. There was an earthquake and every island and mountain was moved from its place when the sixth seal was opened. So, Every man living on this earth knew there is God. The judgment, the punishment has come. Right? And people wanted to hide there in the caves. Right? So uh, then the angel came and preached and said, not belief in Jesus, no, but now it's about fear God. Right? And so the unbelievers that accepted this eternal gospel were then the sheep, were then the good fish, and then helping the persecuted Christians. Right, so if you go, uh, it's uh, spelled out here also in the outline to see clearly the pairing here. If you go to the page number eight, In uh, Roman 1, C, you have the good fish in Matthew 13, which are the sheep, those who accepted the eternal gospel, which are those unbelievers who help and give aid to the persecuted saints and Jews and will inherit, meaning will it continue to live as the nations in the millennium kingdom. Right. Amen. They will enter into the realm of the eternal life there. They will not receive eternal life, but they will enter into the millennium kingdom. 
as the nations and live there. The faithful believers that were rewarded to rule and be a co-king with Christ will rule over those nations in the millennium kingdom. Right? And then the bad fish are the goats, those who reject it. Can you imagine there's still those that will still reject and not fear God? So in this time, the, God shows his mercy again. Our righteous God shows mercy again and has the eternal gospel preached by an angel to still separate among the unbelievers and see who is even so not believing into Jesus Christ and having received eternal life, but who is still among you people who will still fear me. Right? And those then will be rewarded to inherit the millennium kingdom. Amen. Amen. But those that still hardened their hearts, still with all what happening during those terrible time on earth, still did not believe and fear God, did not believe or fear God, they will cast a life into the lake of fire. Yeah, and this concludes <laughs> the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew chapter 13. Amen. Yes, amen. God is a righteous God and deals with every man accordingly to, yeah, to their works and to whether they fear God or not. Amen. 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 Yeah, so may we sound the trumpet and preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. To warn the unbelievers. Amen. The Lord is very gracious to us because he wants us to make it to the kingdom. Amen. Remember what the Lord says it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I think the Lord has done everything he could to help us to make it. There will be no excuse when he comes for you to tell the Lord why and this and that reason I cannot make it. Right, and uh, we all need to see the Lord is, like our brother shared, very gracious even at the very end toward the unbelievers who are still alive. And remember, the Lord called those fish, the good ones, the just, and the bad fish, the wicked. It's very strange because what they did, believing, firstly, or accepting the eternal gospel, and helping the saints who had to go through, and also the Jews at that time, because there are two classes of people who had to go through the people of God. They are those who have the testimony of Jesus. These are the believers of the Lord Jesus, the Christians. And then those who keep the commandments of God, they are the Jews. Right, at least the faithful Jews, they will have to go through. It's very clear in the book of Revelation chapter 12, this is the rest of the seed of the big woman. There. <clears throat> and that proves also in Revelation chapter 12 that that woman was the entire, uh, the entire group of God's people in the past ages. Right? So here, let, let us just read. I think perhaps it is good to know because people will ask you, how do you know that that woman is the uh, complete uh, entity of God's people from the past? Well, and it's not Mary. <laughs> the Catholic says that was Mary. Uh, this is crazy, 
In chapter 12, verse 17, it says, And the dragon was enraged with a woman because he couldn't touch that woman. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Right. And the Catholic says, That was Mary, and Mary ascended to the throne. So uh, this woman is not Mary, definitely, because firstly, she, she did not ascend to the throne, uh, she went to the wilderness. Poor Mary, uh, she has to live all these 2,000 two years in the wilderness. The dragon was enraged with a woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, uh, the rest of her seeds. They are the living ones that are still alive on this earth. But a woman, Satan, could not touch that woman because they have the status of resurrection. Right? So the woman fled to the wilderness, a place prepared by God for them. So here you have those who are still alive. The rest of her seed, it says, the rest of her offspring who keeps the commandments of God, and these are the Jews, and those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. They are not the Jews, they are the Christians. So, in just one little verse there, the Lord reveals so much. Proving to us that this woman is the entire composition of God's people, the patriarch, the age of the patriarch represented <laughs> by the 12 stars, and the moon, the saints in the Old Testament days, and the sun, the age of the new covenant. So God's people compose or comprised of all these three ages in the past. And today, we still have the Jews, the faithful one who keeps the commandment because they still believe in the Old Covenant. And then, of course, we Christians, we are not in the Old Covenant. We are in the New Covenant. We care for the testimony of Jesus. Not just believers of Jesus, but we should be the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is very meaningful. right? So you can see these believers and these people of God <coughs> still have to go through, unfortunately, the three and a half years of the great day of God's wrath. It's very clear. Don't believe that none of us believers will go through. No, no, no. Satan was enraged and will make war with the rest of her offspring. If all the Christians and all of God's people are raptured, I don't care if it's to the throne or in the heaven. No, Satan cannot touch because Satan is cast down to this earth and is, he cannot even jump higher than any of us now here. Maybe with a sticker he can go over maybe three meters, but that's as high as he could go. He couldn't touch us if we were all raptured. But that he could make war with these people here, meaning to say they must be here on this earth during the three and a half years. Otherwise, what we have just read concerning the sheep and the goat, how can the Lord say to the least of my brethren, you did it to me, right? How can they perform those righteous deeds or good deeds if the if they're all up there, <laughs> it's not possible. So it is very, very clear that you can tell the believers, no, 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 there are still some left behind here on this earth, and they will be persecuted. Right. And those unbelievers who Fear God at that time, because everybody knows already there was a God. The only problem is, are you afraid of God or are you not afraid of God? It's written in Revelation that many of them still curse God and blame God. Even cursing him, can you imagine? 
so hardened, just like these people here today. They are already now prepared to be hardened. And so when the Lord, when, when the time comes, they will even be harder. They will be so angry. They will even curse God and continue to practice their witchcraft. They worship demons. And goodness, it will be terrible. This is how hardened the heart of these unbelievers, part of them, some of them are. Right? So when the Lord comes back, he will have to deal with his people. And as our brother shared, right, without these two parables, the kingdom of God, the scripture, will not be complete. And you will not know, and a lot of people ask, well, who are we going to rule over? Well, who are they that we're going to rule over? Are there still any nations left? Well, the Lord knew that we are going to ask this question. <laughs> So he gave us two parables. This is very normal. And the Lord, in his wisdom, covered every question that people might ask today. And so now you know how to answer them. Right. Who are we going to rule over? Are there still going to people, be people left? <laughs> Right. We will be the kings, but who are going to be the nations? Now you know how to answer them. We can show them the parable of the fish. Right. And the Lord, remember, called those sheep also the righteous ones. He called the fish just the just ones and the sheep the righteous ones. Because of that eternal gospel and what they have done in the eyes of God, they are the righteous ones. So I hope that all of these will be very clear to all of us. Read it. All of these are written to encourage us that it is really true. This is the word of God. The Lord, of course, is the Lord. He knows what's going to happen. Right, and many people I heard from so many. Oh, you say the Lord is coming. The Lord says no one knows except the Father. Well, all these parables, it seems the Lord knows so much. <laughs> he even knows what's going to happen. When he comes, he knows. And then in the book of Revelation, at the very end, behold, I come quickly. He even gave us so many signs. But people just want to use that one very verse in Matthew chapter 24 to say, oh, nobody knows. <sighs> that is how people are, even the Christians. It's because they don't care. They don't care to know the Lord is a king and, and he's going to come and what's going to happen when he comes. And so they don't believe that uh, they will have to go through because the way they explained the ten virgins is that huh, five are believers and five are unbelievers. That's not what the Lord says. Sheep and goats, the same. The sheep are the believers, the goats are the unbelievers. That doesn't make sense because they don't see. Seeing they perceive not, and hearing, they heard not. It seems they know, and yet they don't know. <laughs> they twist the word of God <laughs> according to their own desire. They brought God's word down to their level and explained it according to how they want to understand it. They don't care. But the Lord have mercy on us that we do care. And I hope that all of us want to make it. Amen. Don't you want to make it? I want to make it. Right. And we all need his help. And the Lord really wants us to make it. 
Even the two in Matthew chapter 24, they says one is unbeliever and the other one is believed. Well, what can I say? And the Lord is very wise and he spoke in parables. That is why in chapter 24, 25, concerning his coming, because there are some that are alive and most of them are dead, so the numbers of God's people is always number 12. You have the 12 tribes, you have the 12 apostles, and the number of New Jerusalem is all number 12. So in 24 and 25, you have the number 12, except it is divided into 2 and 10. The two are still alive, working and sleeping and uh, right, uh, grinding the mill, working in the field. Uh, the dead ones will not be working, okay. And the ten, the majority, they slept because the Lord went away and didn't come back. He went away for 2,000 years. And so there are a lot of believers who died and slept. So for the two that are alive, one is taken, one is not taken. One has to go through, unfortunately. And for the ten, five are wise, five are not wise, five are foolish, five entered in, the other five didn't. This is very clear. Simple, actually. Too simple. But you have to see it. It is so clear for all of us today, right? Isn't it clear? Surely, even surely is clear. <laughs> right. All of us are clear. Right? Everyone is clear. Because it's so simple. It's because the Lord opened our understanding. And he opened our eyes. It's not because we are uh, intelligent. But the Lord has mercy on us. And so there's no reason why we couldn't make it. No reason. Unless you don't take care of your heart, unless you don't care, unless you're not willing to pay the price, because uh, you don't treasure it. So all these parables is to help us to make it to the kingdom. And this, can you imagine, this is the first gospel. This is the first gospel. The gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. May all the saints that are here at least, and those who are listening to the live streams, those who have a seeking heart, who are seeking for that treasure, right, they will make it. I hope we all make it. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah. Amen. What else can we say, right? <laughs> Amen. Much grace to all of us.